Gags all here. Rest assured, none of us asked for a trade to PTI. That's the good news. Which brings to us to our big story. One day after officially trading MVP finalist Paul George, and I mean officially trading him, last night OKC dealt 2016-17 MVP Russell Westbrook to Houston to join forces for a second time with James Harden. OKC gets back Chris Paul. Think that will kill those rumors about strife between Paul and Harden? Hmm. They also get two first-rounders and two pick swaps. How crazy is the league right now? In the past year and two days, four of the league's seven current MVPs have been traded, or have changed teams, actually. So I, I just have to ask you guys, what do you think this deal means for the NBA landscape? Because we have player after player really just saying, I want to go to another team. And it happens. That is the NBA landscape now. We have to accept it. This is no longer about the brand you wear on your chest. It's about the people that are wearing the brand. That's what moves the needle in the NBA. This is a perfect example, yet again, of player empowerment, which is the new culture of the National Basketball Association. They want to come out and impose their will to play where they want to play. They want to come out and affect their own business to play with the guys they want to play. And whatever that means to anybody else, they don't care. They want to be able to play where they, they want. And I don't have a problem. What does that mean for the value of a contract? Well, yeah. players fought so hard for those long-term <laughs> deals. But let, let's then have the, the hold them to the same standard we hold teams in the NFL to. Like, we've become – it's commonplace for a team in the NFL to hand you a massive deal and then cut you a year later. Nobody cares about it. So we're in a commonplace uh, sort of reality now for the NBA that's the exact opposite. Players may sign this deal, but they're going to affect their destiny whenever they want. But it's also disingenuous to act like this deal existed in a vacuum. None of them have. This is a domino that fell because of the Paul George requesting a trade, and then all all of a sudden, Russell Westbrook is looking around going, yeah, I don't think I can do it with this cast of characters. I don't think I'll be around until 2026 when that Brinks dump truck or Brinks truck of <laughs> assets comes through. So, yes, I do think that it does show player power, but I also think that it is more a product of the dominoes that are falling in the league because now you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. But, but think about those very dominoes you just mentioned. When you talk about Oklahoma City, they got the news that Paul George wanted out and they stayed quiet. None of us knew it was happening until it happened. If there's ever been a team that could have stood up to a player and said, you know what? We're not going to move you. Oklahoma City could have done that, not only with Paul George, but then with Russell Westbrook. Instead, they decided they don't want to pay a bunch of money to be irrelevant, and essentially they let everybody go. But in this new culture, we're in a world now where if you look in 2021, the free agency market right now in 2021 for the NBA is going to have Giannis, LeBron, Kawhi, Paul George, Blake Griffin, Bradley Beal, C.J. McCollum. The list goes mm -hmm. on and on. We were all looking on. at but 2019 I wonder, going, right. wow, this is going to be amazing. And now 2021, it looks like it could be I wonder, insane. though, if any of those players right now could walk Jeremy into their team's offices and say, you know what, that's all well and good, but I'd like to leave now yeah. and get that wish well, fulfilled. We're talking about a new paradigm, right? And it starts this season with Anthony Davis and the dumpster fire, as we all are, have been calling it for several months now in New Orleans. Yeah, This is kind of... Um, you know, the end game of the empowerment of the athlete, which starts 50 years ago with Marvin Miller coming to Major League Baseball Players Association and saying, you know, you guys are not going to be tied for life from now on to these teams that happen to sign you when you were kids and you had no leverage. This is, you know, where it has been moving. Um, the question isn't whether it is uh, fair necessarily for the athletes or fair for the teams. This has nothing to do with fairness. Um, but there is a question about, is it ultimately going to be beneficial to fans when things can change so rapidly, so suddenly, go mm. from being contenders, superstars, mm -hmm. and they're all gone? I wonder yeah. if teams value, if they were forced to choose between players and fans, who they would choose right now. Because part of the paradigm is, hey, OKC, you got a lot of picks right now, and everybody's supposed to be happy. As a Philadelphia guy, I can tell you, yes. when they had their dumpster fire, <laughs> nobody was happy. That trust the process thing came much later Correct. when people were a little more forgiving. However, teams certainly have an obligation to consider the fans, but they have no obligation to take their opinions and how they think a team should be structured into considerations. The fans do support the teams and contribute uh -huh. to their success, but at the end of the day, the reason the people are in the GM roles is because they're far better at constructing a roster All than right. fan, which is short for we, fanatic. We could keep going. <laughs> wow. Some we could keep going. <laughs> yeah, I'm from New York. <laughs>